Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and fellow enthusiasts, today I stand before you to shed light on a topic that has captivated humanity for centuries, space. Now, I'm not just talking about space in this room, the air that you can feel, what it's like touch. I'm talking about a space when you look up and you see a black abyssal void filled with stars in a night sky. Now, the study of space itself is conducted of three main subjects. These are chemistry, biology, and physics. These subjects combine to create two subjects, which is the study of space, mainly astronomy and cosmology. Astronomy being the studies of the stars, and cosmology being the studies of celestial bodies and the universe. So why should we study about space? Well, maybe there will be a new scientific theory coming up in the very near future. And it might be. You can imagine it. So how is space useful to us? You might have heard of GPS, Google Earth, Google Maps. A quick question to everybody in this room. Please raise your hand if you have used these applications for at least once a day. From this side of the room to this side of the room, please raise your hand. I'm sure most of you have, and I've seen a lot of hands. This just proves that we are so aligned to it. And where that came from? It came from space technologies, mainly satellites in a low Earth orbit. These satellites send signals to different receptors on Earth, which then send data to your phone, showing you real-time image on where you're going and how to get there. Another huge importance of space is that space is actually trying to help us solve one of the world's biggest problems. I'm talking about overpopulation. Overpopulation is when you have so many people in so little space. Right now, we have around 8 billion people on Earth, but by the next few hundreds of years, this number will go more and more and more. Soon, we have so many people on Earth that living stone rods will drop. And the only solution to solving this problem is to colonize other planets. We could start with our very own natural satellite, the moon. The moon itself can hold up to around 5 billion people, and then we would continue by colonizing Mars and Venus. Colonizing these planets won't be easy, and it will be one of the hardest challenges humanity has ever faced. But it's not impossible. And speaking about the technologies used to colonize these planets, back when my parents and my grandparents were kids, we didn't have the technologies that we are used to today. Things like solar cells, laser beams, advanced cell phones, and satellites. Living back then was 10 times harder, but with all the technologies right now, living is 10 times easier. So it's really important to think that most of the technologies that we are using right now, without us even realizing, actually came from space technologies we originated with. Again, ladies and gentlemen, you might have a dream to go out there far away in space or step on the moon once in a lifetime. And I'm also one of those persons who is dreaming to step out there. But there's one problem. Space is a hard topic. But if space is a hard topic, then whoever gets anything from studying about space? Take one of my biggest inspirations, for example. His name is Stephen Hawking. Since he was a kid, he had a dream of becoming a space scientist when he grew up. But when he was in his teens, an accident struck him. This accident almost caused him to die immediately and has put him in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Even though he was left looking severely disabled, he still didn't manage to give up on trying to pursue his dreams of becoming a space scientist. Since then, he published many theories all about how space works, mainly black holes and the energies that they emit. Later, these theories were later proven by other famous scientists, which at that point, he got even more fame and popularity from the outside world. Right now, he's one of my huge inspirations, along with Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a person who builds SpaceX, Tesla, and SolarCity. He's also a person who's trying to make space exploration closer to ourselves. He's trying to make us feel that space isn't something far away from us, and is actually really close to us. And by doing that, he's trying to organize space missions to send people into space for their vacations. Again, all these inspirations have added me up. 
because since I was in my six and seven years old, I also have a dream of becoming an astronaut. Since then, I saw reading books, comics, and theories all about how space works. But it wasn't until my early 11s. This is when I have a huge opportunity to join space camp to meet with a former NASA astronaut. His name is Charles D. Gemmer, or you can call him Sam for short. My teammates and I collaborated together to build something called a CubeSat. A CubeSat is kind of like a miniature satellite. It's no bigger than a tissue box you used to hold your tissues back at home. It's only 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters in size. To get that in comparison, this is what a CubeSat normally looks like. It's this big, yet thousands of these are sent into space every single year, and they will form tasks just like a satellite, but smaller. They can take and record photos and videos. They can monitor Earth's climate, and then these data will be sent to different computers back down on Earth. Sam has inspired me, and I think that one of the reasons why we send human astronauts to exploring space rather than sending robots is that humans can inspire humans, but robots cannot. Just imagine a human astronaut landing and setting foot on Mars for the very first time in mankind history. When he or she returns to Earth, he or she is going to be a huge inspiration to everybody all around the world. So in conclusion, space is a huge topic to uncover. It has done so many great things to us, like solving one of the world's biggest problems to make our lives 10 times easier by space technologies that we are used to today. In the end, space exploration is the inspiration that pays back to everybody. That has inspired us to challenge what is possible to think about a better future. I really hope that you think positive of space, whether it's the sake of new knowledge, the benefits that is created for the humanity, the hope that is inspired, or the opportunities that is provided. There might be nowhere out there, far away in space, for you and for me to breathe. But opportunities and dreams for me and for you. Space and the future is related and vice versa. With the profound importance of space, the future may not be what it used to be, but it can be what your dreams it to be. Thank you.